debate night, community members asking Republican candidates the tough questions, where you can watch the full debate. We take you to the Sundial Bridge tonight where possibly life-saving information was handed out while support grows for a community of fighters. Just kind of shock that something like this could happen and anybody who knew him, it's the same thing, just trying to figure out, you know, what, what connection there was and what had happened that would lead up to this. The mysterious death of a Vermont National Guardsman now being investigated as a homicide. The North State's news starts right now. Live, local, breaking, news you can trust. This is the North States News at 11. Good evening. Welcome to the North States News at 11. I'm Ariana Martinez. The Shasta County Republican Party hosted a political debate earlier this evening. One of those moderators, Dr. Daniel Sloan, talked about the importance of the debate. It's important for them to get their word out because we need to know as voters who we're voting for. And it's difficult. We have people that are, one of them's in uh, Susanville. That's where they're, they're living, so they're running from there. We have another one in Modoc County. We have three from Shasta County, and that's for just the assembly alone. Chief Photographer Adam McAllister was at the event earlier tonight. Candidates had equal time to present their platforms. This was a public meeting where community members asked some tough questions, including how would candidates effectively achieve Republican ideas in California, the stance on critical race theory being taught in classrooms, the cost of living in the North State and California, access to water in rural areas of California, as well as Second Amendment ruling involving large capacity guns. If you want to see all of the answers to these questions, you can watch the full debate on our YouTube page. Just look for KRCR Channel 7 on YouTube or visit our website, then click on the article. The Shasta GOP committee privately voted on endorsements for several political positions. A public vote has not been made, although those in attendance tonight voted on their preferred candidate so far. Right now, Reading Council member Tanessa Audette is preferred for Assembly District 1, candidate Megan Dolly as Assembly Senate Dis 1 candidate, and Doug LaMalfa as the U.S. Congressional District candidate. Again, this is nothing official, simply a poll taken by those in attendance. All of these results were provided by the GOP. We'll keep you updated with official res results on Election Day on air and online at krcrtv.com. In national news, President Biden's speech tonight sets the stage for an anticipated spending request aiming to fund both Israel and Ukraine. It's a smart investment that's going to pay dividends for American security for generations. Help us keep American troops out of harm's way. Help us build a world that is safer, more peaceful, more prosperous for our children and grandchildren. The exact details of the proposal won't be unveiled until tomorrow. It's expected to include $14 billion in emergency assistance for Israel, with about $60 billion for Ukraine. The issue now goes to Congress, which currently cannot pass any spending bills until the House appoints a new speaker. President Biden denouncing anti-Semitism and Islamophobia amid the Israel-Hamas war. Biden speaking directly to Americans who may be hurting right now. I want you to know I see you, you belong, and I want to say this to you, you're all America, you're all America. President Biden reflected on the Islamophobia and distrust seen in the U.S. following the September 11th terror attacks. He emphasizes the U.S. is a nation of religious freedom. He also condemns the killing of a six-year-old Muslim boy in Illinois, saying Americans cannot be silent. Let's bring it back to the North State. We're looking live over the Sundial Bridge where things have calmed down a bit. A few hours ago, there were hundreds of people buzzing around hearing powerful stories from those going through their breast cancer journey right now while gathering possible life-saving information. I had the pleasure of meeting some of you amazing men and women tonight. Here is a highlight of what this Think Pink event means for them. This event is education. My second mammogram, I had breast cancer at 42. I have had breast cancer again in 2018 at 48. So education, that it happens to anybody. Very thankful that she is a survivor. I know a lot of people aren't so lucky, right? So uh, we're excited about that, but we're really excited to try to share. I know what she's really passionate about is 
sharing with others that early detection is the key, right? And then taking action from that early detection. So that's why we're really excited to be here tonight. This event, um, it just makes me happy that this many people are going to get the information out there and hopefully it will save someone else's life. For me, it's just a way to know that I'm supported. And any, you know, women feel isolated and alone going through this a lot of times, even, even with family and even with partners, you still actually have an element of feeling alone. And this shows you're not alone. You're not, we're all together. A lot of people don't have the support and that's where we step in. As somebody who's gone before them, that's where we step in and we can become a family that you didn't know you have. And that support is right there for you each and every day. Sive. Thank you. Very and it was impressive. so good to hear from all of them today. Different stories, meeting different people in the community, some of our viewers. So thank you so much for all of you that watch us. We appreciate you and we love to hear from you. But while I was down there, Brian, it was <laughs> toasty. Let me tell you, I know I was carrying my camera and uh -huh. running around like a crazy person, <laughs> but it was it was warm out there. <laughs> That's why it's doubly impressive that you did that. It's, it's, it really is running around. And I just walked from my car to here and I was like, this is not hot at all. <laughs> and you're like, no, it is. Look at these numbers. Okay, then the numbers showed up at 95 in Reading and 95 Red Bluff, 83 Alturas, 84 City of Mount Chester. You know, right there, some big numbers there. And yes, we did hit 90 in Chico and 93 in Corning. So how about record temperatures? Mm, oh, so close. Not quite there. Today, 95, 99, the record last year. Last year, A for effort on that one, but... Wow, well, we already knew that. Last year was a hot one every time we start comparing things. Okay, so what has dropped off? Now, the sneaker waves, the strong currents, the beach hazards advisory, that is no more now. But see all that gray shaded area? Northern Humboldt Coast through tomorrow morning, dense fog advisory. So reduce visibility, you're used to it, but nevertheless, it can sneak up on you too. So keep that in mind. It doesn't look like much is going on. Truly, things are okay, but more clouds on the increase more rain chances on the increase, but temperatures on the decrease. You better believe that. They're coming down. Take a closer look at them in your first alert forecast. That's just ahead. This just into the newsroom. The Chico Police Department is looking for an at-risk adult woman. This is Charity Deal. Police say she was reported missing tonight out of Northeast Chico. Reports say the 28-year-old left her residence around 7 in the evening. She hasn't been seen since. She might be traveling to Orville or Thermalito. She's described as a white woman, 5 foot 8, about 300 pounds. If you see her, contact Chico Police at the number you see on your screen. Red Bluff police are still looking for a wanted parolee tonight. They say Frederick Appleby is considered armed and dangerous. If you see him, do not confront him. Instead, call Red Bluff police at 530-527-3131, then ask for Detective Dever. A North State family is asking for your help as they recover from a devastating car crash. The crash happened around 2 in the morning on Monday along Highway 44 near Shingletown. Now, the family of 17-year-old Shane Giles is asking for your help as their son recovers from this crash. He's looking at, here's a go, look at their GoFundMe for Shane. They say he did wake up yesterday and was able to hold up his thumbs, but note the path to recovery is a long one. If you'd like to help the family in any way, you can donate to their GoFundMe page. We have a link to it on our website, krcrtv.com. The mysterious death of 27-year-old Gunnar Watson, a Vermont National Guardsman, is now being investigated as a homicide. Reporter Calvin Cutler tells us what details about this case are causing people to wonder what happened. The front door to Watson's house along Route 16 in Wheelock was boarded up Wednesday. He was killed Monday morning in his mudroom as he was getting ready for work. Even at my daughter called that she had an issue and I went over and he was on the kitchen floor and that was the end of it. That was the beginning to a state police investigation into what they're calling a homicide. Just kind of shock that something like this could happen and anybody who knew him, it's the same thing. Just trying to figure out, you know, what, what connection there was and what had happened that would lead up to this. Watson's family members are searching for answers and looking for help. When asked if they were concerned about their safety. We have no reason to believe that there's someone coming back here to do any more harm to our family. We don't know. We don't know why this senselessness happened. We have no idea. Watson was also a rising talent within Vermont's Army National Guard, having completed airborne, ranger and sniper school all in two years. His National Guard commander describes him as a leader, 
saying Sergeant Watson consistently demonstrated exceptional physical and mental prowess, epitomizing the ideal of the quiet professional and earned the admiration and respect of his peers and superiors. Watson leaves behind his wife and two children, five years and 14 months old. We've yet to really come into contact with someone who didn't like him as a person or as a soldier or as a, someone that they worked with. Police are continuing to ask anyone in the area with home security footage or game cameras to check for suspicious activity or if someone saw something or someone suspicious when they passed by the property Monday morning. Police say they are now investigating two shooting deaths in the area but say they don't think they are connected. After the break, protests at CSU Humboldt, students and staff questioning tuition hikes. What they had to say next. First, here's a live look from our Hasselrood Law Skycam looking over Redding. It was a warm one earlier today, but things have cooled down nicely. A look at what to expect in our first alert forecast. Teacher at Enterprise High School has passed away. The Reading School posted it on Facebook today. They say Justin Jordan has been a positive force on the campus every day, admired by students, staff, and the community. The high school's website indicates he taught social sciences. He'd been working at the school the last 22 years since 2001. Students and faculty at Cal Poly Humboldt rallied on campus today to raise awareness on two separate issues. Those are the inclement tuition hikes coming to California State University campuses and the strike vote that university faculty will vote on next week. The North State's News' Sophie Lincoln was at the rallies earlier today. Shot from the top! Tuition's gotta drop! Shot from the top! Tuition's gotta drop! The phrase chop from the top could be heard across Cal Poly Humboldt's campus Thursday morning as students and faculty rallied against their own education system, the California State University. You're just like scoping for resources around and you're rethinking like, yeah. is this the university that I want to be at? Will I be like safe? Um, will I get my needs met? The rally was held in promotion of two separate causes led by CSU students and staff. The first is in relation to a multi-year tuition hike that will increase enrollment fees by nearly 34 percent over the next five years. One in ten students is housing insecure and one in four students is food insecure. And so adding more costs on top of all of that is a huge concern for a lot of students, including myself. The second cause is led by members of the California Faculty Association, who are advocating for better wages for CSU employees. Some of our lecturers are making less than what our president is making for their housing allowance, and that's not fair. Students and faculty say all that money that is going to top executives like the university presidents should be more evenly distributed so they don't have to charge students more and pay staff less to cover costs. We have a board of trustees that just voted with our public money. This is our money. This The CSU is a public university for the public good. This week, members of the California Faculty Association will vote on whether they should go on strike to push the CSU to increase their wages. Chico State is looking to support local students looking to become teachers with a new grant. It's called the Great Teacher Pipeline Grant. GREAT actually stands for Growing, Responsive, Equitable, Adaptable, and Transformative. We spoke to educators this week at the Future Teacher Expo at Chico State. They say although the grant is open to students at any stage in their education, there's a big need for special education teachers right now. And, uh, we're partnering with Oroville, Red Bluff, and Chico, um, and just are super excited to have you know people learning more about the profession and considering becoming teachers too. We have a massive teacher shortage right now in the state of California, and we need more diverse student te student teachers and teachers out in schools to meet the needs of a growing diversity in our schools. And the way to do that is to um, create a pipeline. This is a three-year grant for $13 million. 300 students can take advantage of it every semester. For more information on the grant, students can email greatteachers at csuchico.edu. Got a nice looking Friday ahead. You can see a little increase in cloud cover, but staying warm, but just not 90s. That's all. Clouds and sun mix. Yeah, we'll see that through the weekend too. 
showery Sunday and maybe even beyond Sunday. I'll show you uh, when it gets in here, when it goes in your first alert forecast. So good. Here's a live look at Highway 44 tonight. Just a car or two out there. There were plenty on the road just a couple hours ago after the Sundial Bridge event, the Think Pink event ended and the Haunted House event ended. It was warm earlier, but you right now would need a jacket, I would think. Let's check in with First Alert mm -hmm. Meteorologist Brian Schofield to see just how cold it is out there right now. Each day, less and less t-shirt weather, I'll tell you that, and especially this time of night. Throw up that number there, 64 degrees right now. Yeah, man, you know, if you're a hearty soul, sure, but it is, this time of night, next week, we'll be in the 50s and 40s. So, Oh, and I want to add this in, a dense fog advisory. Now they've added um, coastal Del Norte as well. So I would be remiss if I didn't just update that. So there you go. Del Norte, northern Humboldt through tomorrow morning, quarter mile visibility or less. There are no beach hazard statements anymore. Those have been allowed to expire. So for our friends out on the coast, dense fog, reduced visibility. Sounds like something you've done so many times before, right? But now there's an advisory. Either way, uh, we're looking pretty good locally. I mean, we're not seeing much going on tonight. And really not much tomorrow and not much Saturday. But we're talking about some weekend wet weather. But most of it really becomes a Sunday event. It starts to approach Saturday to the coast. But really, you get most of your Saturday with nothing going on. High pressure still here. It slides out, allows some of this to move out of the way. The cloud cover will start to move in and then, then all, yeah, all bets are off. I tell you, so you look at 1130 AM Saturday and still nothing doing across the area. It takes till the evening hours to really start to get here. And computer models are actually slowing it down a little bit because it was a 930 to 10 event. So it's, it's yeah, it's definitely on the slow path right there. So all across the area, we don't see much to do about this, but then there you go. <laughs> yeah, you know, and it, it looks a little spotty. Sure, there'll be some breaks in it, but I'll tell you, that's nice to see it getting area wide. So most areas will not get robbed, whereas one gets all of the rain and someone gets none. It looks like it'll be pretty evenly spread for a little bit before it starts to zip on out of here. And when it does, uh, you know, we get a pretty good Monday. So I've been showing this off throughout the day and Monday looks relatively clear. Uh, we'll call it mostly sunny, but uh, you know, the computer models are still hinting back and forth. It'll take a little time to get it out of here. But once it does look good, right? Look at Tuesday. And Tuesday looked really dicey yesterday. It looked a little snow ridden and that has been just redacted. So there's not much there. And then here it comes in for Thursday into Friday. So let's just take it with a grain of salt. Some of this timing for next week and focus on the here and now and the weekend. The weekend looks good. We know we're going to end it off a little wet. We've got fog in the morning, fog again for uh, Saturday. And then of course, bringing in the moisture on Sunday and that'll be area wide. Show you the inland numbers. They uh, drop even more than obviously those coastal numbers do. Inland of the coast, let's say out to Willow Creek, Junction City. Yeah, definitely out to those areas and just having a good old time. Maybe not a little bit to Weaverville too. Seeing temperatures in the 80s tomorrow, 70s Saturday, 60s thereafter. And uh, yeah, we see a day with 70. Remember, we warm things up on Monday, but not much thereafter. Okay, these are some nice numbers, but we're still seeing 30s. And because we've been clear, We've been relatively calm, so you get these 30s for the upper elevation. It's been very pleasant. There's your chill. There, you're, Ariane, you're not wearing the t-shirt there. That's not, you're not doing that unless it's the afternoon. 53 Corning, uh, 45 Weaverville. And then for Reading, here's what it looks like. You know, once again, no 90s tomorrow per se, but you know, truly dropping down only a few degrees. So it's still a warm day. So don't go running around all over interviewing people. That might <laughs> take your time. Pace yourself. Get 70s thereafter. Once again, rain, maybe even a thunderstorm on Sunday too. It's not out of the question. Then we keep those 50s for lows. We do 70s most of the weekend for afternoon highs. And then the temperatures just kind of drop up and down from there. We're not, you know, obviously we're still in fall and we should be in the 70s anyway. That's our normal high. But next week, once again, looks a little unsettled. All right, back to you. Thank you, Brian. The Chico Regional Airport has made a huge contribution in fighting wildfires in our area. The North State's News Hannah Gutierrez visited the airport to get a look at the inside of the operation. I'm here at Chico Regional Airport to find out how aircrafts like this one have helped fight fires throughout the North State. Uh, we have a, a strong relationship with them in basically giving them a place to, to be to, to have their operation for fighting wildfires in the, the North State here. Chico Regional Airport has collaborated with CAL FIRE to serve as an air tanker base and servicing aerial firefighting. This makes Chico one of 14 airports in the state to do so. The local staff that are based here, um, they, they get word of it and they get a call and they send their, their aircraft 
off to, to hit it either as a tanker or as they call it, uh, air attack as a spotting aircraft. Their response happens very quickly. In July, Chico Regional Airport held a leading role in air attack operations going as far as the Oregon border on contract with the U.S. Forest Service. A new water tank operated by CAL FIRE was recently installed at the airport to provide the ability for an immediate response to wildfires. What makes me proud is that we have this uh, available to be able to combat uh, wildfires as well as a resource for there to be um, staging and operations to be based here and that uh, I can be a part of that is, is uh, important. With all the air attack bases throughout the state, CAL FIRE can respond to any fire within 20 minutes of a base. The Chico Regional Airport is happy to continue to be part of firefighting missions throughout the North State. We're now reporting in Chico, Hannah Gutierrez, The North State's News. After the break, gas prices finally going down. Cursive riding is making a comeback in California. Plus, it might cost more to make a phone call if you're a T-Mobile customer. Big stories, local impacts, next. With him. back, we're talking about some big stories making local impacts. It's becoming increasingly cheaper to buy gas in the U.S. Finally, AAA says the average price for a gallon of regular gas dipped eight cents since last week. It's down 32 cents from a month ago. That's despite increased demand and decreased supply in the United States. One factor is states are switching to cheaper winter blends. Another is the cost of oil remains flat despite the war in Israel. After years of students no longer learning how to read or write in cursive, it is making a comeback in California after Governor Newsom signed a bill requiring cursive instruction in first through sixth grade. Some young teachers may also have to learn how to read and write in cursive as it hasn't been taught in most schools for about 13 years. If you're a T-Mobile customer, you're advised to take a close look at your next phone bill. The major wireless carrier is running a test in which it automatically switches some customers to more expensive rate plans. The change affects customers on older unlimited plans. All of those customers will be migrated to T-Mobile's 5G network plan, which starts at $75 per month per phone line. T-Mobile users will have the option to keep their current plan or opt out of the new one by calling customer service. Dad, make sure you check your bill. We'll be right back. We had a Halloween debate in our newsroom earlier today whether candy corn is good or bad. So we wanted to see what you guys had to say about it. So we're going to look on our Instagram page. This is the KRCR News Channel 7 Instagram page. Make sure to follow that. And there's actually a lot of you. Look, there's uh, World Renown says it's good, good, candy corn, meh, but in the pumpkin shape is better, apparently. Um, hard pass, good, sugar, it's bad for you, but it's candy corn. There's so many different comments and we love to hear from you guys. So make sure to follow us on our Instagram page. This is also on Facebook, but that's the consensus. We are getting good, bad. Not very many people in the newsroom liked it. I'm kind of Switzerland about it. What do you think, Brian? Uh, I'm fascinated that so many people online liked it because I'm always alone when I say I like candy corns. I mean, I even made these colors just like candy corns. I can taste them now. <laughs> but wow, that's, that's, that's pretty good. I've, I don't know why I've always liked them. It's just the way it is. Sometimes you grow out of your kid taste. Not everything. Right. They know. don't taste bad. They no. just, you know, aren't the best for you. I still, I still <laughs> cut my sandwiches in six pieces. And, no, no, I'm kidding. Anyway, take a look. Let's see what's going on. Hey, temperatures are dropping, so some rain as well. So we have that coming into the forecast, especially by Sunday. You can tell that will be a rain day and temperatures will be much cooler. Back to you. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. Make sure to join us right back here tomorrow for the latest news, weather, and sports. And also let us know what you think about candy corn.